In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God, amen. We all pray, but most likely we don't know how to pray, or we don't pray as God wants. One time, the disciples saw Jesus praying and felt that he was doing something different than what they were doing. They said to him, Lord, teach us how to pray. They were originally Jews and had prayed their whole lives, and many of them were disciples of John the Baptist. This means that they knew how to pray well, but when they saw Jesus praying, they told him to teach them how to pray because he prayed differently. His prayer was different, and its flavor was different. One of the things we have not achieved is enjoying God's fatherhood during prayer. Praying in colloquial language is a, is, is a child in his father's bosom or a child running to his father, his ideal father who loves him very much and is always busy with him. If you didn't reach this feeling during prayer, it means you didn't pray. If you pray not in a good way in which you say a lot of words without benefit, then get up to eat or watch television. Thus, you did not pray. It is good that you fulfilled the duty, but that is a loss. Not because God was upset with you because you did not pray well, no, but because the issue is bigger than that. You lost a moment in your life that would have been the most beautiful moment in your life if you felt what it means to speak to your father, who is very happy that you are speaking to him and looks at you with a lot of love and who is waiting for for the moment you talk to him. Prayer is simply a meeting between a person and God, or between a son and his father. In the minds of the fathers who love to pray, why was prayer the most important thing in the lives of the saints? No one was commanding the saints to pray without their will. No one was imposing a law on them. The saints crossed these limits, not with anger, but because they were enjoying it. What causes a person to leave the whole world and go to the monastery? And then leave the monastery and go to the desert. Even the monastery wasn't enough. He does not want the prayer to end. No one is forcing him to do that, and no one is angry with him. He is happy and enjoying it. Once I saw one of my relatives carrying his child, and the child was three years old, and the father was showing him some roses and telling him that they would only look at the rose and smell it, and that they would not cut it because it would die. Then the boy looked at his father naughtily as he was on his shoulder and then cut the rose. His father was very calm and made one move, which was that he put his son down. The child started screaming and wailing, although his father did not hit him and did not shout at him, and he did not appear angry at him. But when he put his child down, the child felt that his father was rejecting him and forced his father to carry him again. One of the Russian saints, Russian saints are very good, by the way. This Russian saint said that a Christian remains lost and sad until he discovers his father's embrace. That is, the meaning of prayer. We have not discovered the meaning of prayer yet. We are lost in this world. We are crying and sad because we descended from his embrace. God is waiting for you to cry to to hold you again, but we do not realize that, or we are no longer looking for that embrace. The first or most famous time that Jesus spoke about prayer was in the Sermon of the Mount. You have memorized it, but you forgot. He said, But you, when you pray, go into your room, and when you have shut your door, pray to your Father who is in the secret place, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you openly. The key to these two lines is the words, Your Father. The Jew, unfortunately, used to pray as we now pray, that is, to perform a duty, or, per- or pray to satisfy our conscience, or to complete the ritual, or to complete the law, as others pray. No. We do not like that at all. That is not what God wants. He said, when you pray, isolate yourself and go to your father and tell him whatever you want. When you pray, go into your room and when you have shut your door, pray to your father who is in the secret place and your father who sees in secret will reward you openly. This means on the last day, he will reward you more than you can imagine. So why be afraid when you are standing at the gates of heaven? You're his son. That is with the affirmation of prayer. The first affirmation attesting to your Christianity 
is that you pray. And praying means that you say to him, My Father. Will God reject a person who, at the gates of heaven, says to him, My Daddy? No, not even if he has committed all sins. Therefore Jesus said to them, When you pray, say, Our Father. Because that is the most important thing in the matter. Pray thus, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. When our Lord loved to tell us about the story of the whole of humanity, he put it in a famous example, which is an example of the prodigal son. The saints understood that he was talking about humanity, so he refused to name the son, and we do not know the name of the prodigal son. He said that the son took everything he wanted, then fled, and his father was silent, sad, and patient with him. Although the son had done all the misfortune and wasted all the money and returned to his father while he was barefoot and losing everything. But when he was still a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. All this just because the prodigal son left the pigs he was with and started coming back. That is prayer. Prayer is a person who has taken serious steps. He thinks in his very far-fetched dreams, which he imagines are too much for him, will I be able to kiss my father's hand, and will he accept me? Then he is surprised, not only by his father's acceptance of him, but by his embrace as well. So when a person goes to pray and says to him, Can I talk to you? Will you accept me? He leaves the prayer having obtained his father's embrace, not just acceptance and forgiveness. He took more than that. I can't forget a time when I was teaching children in Sunday school and we made a play about the story of the prodigal son and how he did his how he did sins and after his return his father brought out the calf and the ring for him and so on. The children were interested in the story and I asked them what the son would mo- what the son would be most happy with before he slept at night. That is the gold ring, the calf, the lamb which he is eating from now on instead of eating rubbish the new robe, the the servants who work for him, or the hug of his father. The children impulsively jumped up from their seats and said the hug from his father. Even the children understood it. The ring and the robe have beautiful symbolic meanings, but a person must understand that this hug is more precious than any other gift. God's hug is more precious than any other gift. Even if you get success, even if you get health, even if you get to live to an old age, and heaven itself, those things can't compare to your Father's embrace. All of these things would be natural results of obtaining your Father's embrace. As long as a person gets that, then all that remains is a foregone conclusion. When you say, forgive me, he says, I already forgave you, my son. You received my embrace. I will not wait for you to confess you did wrong. The matter is over. This includes forgiveness, internal inheritance, and everything, of course. When the older brother objected to receiving the prodigal son, that is, when the Jews objected, objected to receiving the sinful nations, the Gentiles, like us, for they, they wanted to monopolize God, our Lord said to the Jews a beautiful word, He said to the older brother that you should have been happy because this brother of yours, who is my son, was dead and he became alive. And after all that the lost son did, God still calls him my son. The most beautiful word our Lord has for us is when he calls someone my son. But as long as you are outside the house, away from his embrace, he cannot call you my son. When a person is far from God, he wants to call him my son. Just as you rejoice in calling him daddy, he also rejoices in saying to you, my son. So why do you torture him and yourself? Again, I repeat that prayer is the discovery of the fatherhood and embrace of God, and that God is your father. This has a great meaning. There is no father among us, of course, We have never heard of or seen any father among us 
who has tenderness like that of God. For example, say a person has a good father. If all the negatives in that father are removed and all the positives in him are multiplied by a million, the result will be a father that still doesn't even come close to our Lord. Anyone among us has had a tender father or grandfather who naturally has his own weaknesses, forget about that. Remember a beautiful moment that was between you and him or a a beautiful situation. With God, the pleasant moments and situations will always be and they will be without limits. How beautiful and joyful the matter is. That is why St. John Climacus said prayer is the key to joy. You will not be happy while you do not pray. If the amount of your joy is a little, then this is because your prayers are few. So if you want to be happy a lot, pray a lot. There is no other solution. You can eat a lot. You can laugh a lot. You can watch plays. But all these things are insignificant. If you want to have true joy, come pray. Because whenever you feel the embrace of your father, you will find that the matter is very beautiful. Pay close attention. I am not talking about what we say in prayer because it doesn't matter what you say. Say anything. What is important is that you reach a certain feeling. God does not care about what, you, about what we say in prayer, but he cares about the feelings that rise to the surface from inside you. Feelings are much stronger than words because God does not look at faces. When the Pharisees said many words, our God did not respond to him. Likewise, when the tax collector hit his chest and said to him, I am a sinner, which were the most beautiful words, what matters are your feelings.